What's going on, comic fans? It is Mike from the Hardcover Comic here. Hope you're all doing well, staying safe and sound. Um, I personally am very excited for this video. It's been a while since I've done a sort of must-read or a top five-ish kind of video, um, especially one about a creator. So um, I'm very excited to talk about this one. It's, it's a writer that, um, oddly enough, really got me into Marvel at one point. Um, and still continues to be a writer that I get very excited to see jump on a new title. Jason Aaron, <clears throat> a spectacular, spectacular creator. He's worked for a bunch of companies, written a bunch of different stories with a lot of artists. And today I wanted to talk about five of his runs or stories that I consider must-read stories. Um, if you're looking for sort of a, I guess you could call it a top five, I wouldn't... You know, these things change all the time. I may think of a story from Jason Aaron and a moment in it that I really loved more than another moment. But anyway, I could go on and on uh, about how I rank my things. But these are five runs that I think everyone should read, should check out. All of them written by Jason Aaron. Um, before we get into that, really quickly want to mention organicpricebooks.com. Um, you can easily, easily get amazing hardcovers on there. You can pre-order your Omnis, your Absolutes, your Deluxe Editions. You can see what's on back order. Um, they ship quickly. They ship securely. Uh, amazing customer service. Prices keep getting better and better. Um, and the selection keeps growing and growing. Check them out, organicpricebooks.com. Use the promo code THC2 at checkout. It'll get you an extra $2 off every single one of your orders. Just use the code THC2. Now let's talk about some Jason Aaron must-read series and runs. <laughs> The first title I want to talk about is one that is definitely not for children, not really that any Jason Aaron run is particularly for children, but uh, Scalped, a Vertigo Comics title that came out uh, probably around 20 years ago, written by Jason Aaron with artwork by R.M. Guerra. This was a crime noir type story that took place in what uh, what would be basically South Dakota um, in the U.S. It followed the Oglala Lakota. Um, and it basically was in a, on a fictional reservation that Jason Aaron and Arm Guerra made up for this book. Uh, it follows a character named Dashiell Badhorse, among other characters within the Scalps universe, um, all of it focusing on this Prairie Rose reservation. Uh, a really incredible, incredible story. Uh, 60 issues is a fantastic length for, for a, you know, a decently long run. Um, you get to really explore uh, Dashiell's his history, um, his present, you get to see how he evolves as a character, uh, you get to see how all the various um, people from his past life, um, whether they're family, previous relationships, friends, or just general sort of problem makers within the, the reservation. Um, you get to see how the cops interfere with this as well, maybe some intelligence, maybe Dash is doing something he shouldn't be. There's a lot going on in this amazing series. It's extremely mature though, there's nudity, violence, all that stuff. Um, you definitely want to be over 18 if you're reading this. Um, and I, I just loved it. Scalped is definitely one of my my favorite runs of all time. I really regret selling the, the deluxe editions. I hope we see a set of Omnis one day. I hope we see some absolute editions. Um, I really like Aram Guerra's artwork on the title. It may not be for everyone, but it really suits the tone of the book, um, which is um, fast-paced, action-packed, full of mystery and espionage, um, and full of character, uh, personality, and just absolutely dripping with anguish. It's such an amazing book. I highly recommend it if you're looking for something mature and relatively long. Next up, we'll get uh, a little friendlier, but still pretty damn dark with his Ghost Rider run. Um, so he wrote Ghost Rider uh, issues number 20 through 35. I think it was like the 06 series. I may be wrong on the year, though. Um, and then uh, there was a mini series called Heavens on Fire, issues 1 through 6, um, all, written by J all written by Jason Aaron with, uh, with some incredible, incredible artists like Tony Moore, um, among others. I forget all the names now, but a really, really fascinating run. It's a... It's Ghost Rider at the end of the day. Um, it's really fun, really action-packed. It has some cool concepts, um, really, really cool artwork. It's really um, fun to see more than one Ghost Rider character that we're used to. Um, primarily at the time, Ghost Rider was following uh, Johnny Blaze um, and Danny Ketch at the same time. It's pretty interesting. You get to see some other villains that Jason Aaron likes to use within the Marvel Universe often. Um, 
yeah it's it's really interesting it's cool to like look through a, a creator's entire bibliography at one big two publisher for example and see how they've reused villains or like upgraded the villains as they've been upgraded within their writing ability you know as as they can write an event it's cool to see a villain from like a goofy story like this ghost rider once show up in an event um things like that it's really cool to see um and this ghost rider especially you get to see um some ghost riders that don't ride motorcycles in here as well uh, very very cool stuff i really enjoyed it the artwork was very dynamic and exciting there was an omnibus for this uh, run at one point i think it's quite hard to get now it was a pretty old omnibus from what i remember still when marvel was doing like the faux leather binding um really really nice book though if you can find it a really fun run it's tough to find uh thoroughly thoroughly turn page enjoyable uh, ghost rider and Jason Aaron's run is definitely up there for me. Next up, an image comic series from Jason Aaron and Jason Latour, Southern Bastards. Uh, this was a, a fantastic series that uh, drew me in, honestly, from the first issue. Uh, I was completely sucked in. Um, I do have, you know, the, the first hardcover that came out. There was supposed to be a second one, but we never actually saw it, um, unfortunately. But Southern Bastards was a, a relatively short-lived series. Um, from both Jason Aaron and Jason Latour. The series ran for 21 issues and uh, primarily focused around Croc County. Um, there's a team of a football team there called the Running Rebs, and, and at the start of Southern Bastards, you get introduced to this character named um, Earl Tubb. Um, you get introduced to the big boss, the coach of the team, um, and sort of the, 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 the problems within this small town where this football team is like everything. It's pretty much the identity of the town. It's the identity of the people. It's what they all love and live for. Um, and it's really interesting to see Earl Tubb, this character who, this old grizzled character who's coming back to Croc County, um, Alabama, after years and years and years of being away. I'm having to deal with all the craziness happening within the county, all the shady business um, with the coach, um, seeing how that entire plot wraps up within the first eight issues and then seeing how the plot changes after that as new characters get involved um really really fascinating a really thoroughly enjoyable story with um a lot of shades of gray a lot of shades of gray which um i personally found very interesting it's the type of book where you kind of hate every character but you also kind of sympathize with every character um the artwork is is in my opinion great i really like it i wish they had done oversized hardcovers for the series there would have at least at least been two at this point but um uh, from what i remember hearing jason latour doesn't like his artwork blown up um so that's why they did the standard size hardcovers you can you should still be able to find volume one out there it's not too crazy little cool things about the hardcover itself um you get things like little uh, recipes in the back highly recommend checking those out but the series itself is fantastic it's a book that you know came and went with releases and never really got wrapped up in a cool way um and unfortunately who knows what's going to happen with the book so maybe one day we'll see a return to southern bastards but for now there's 21 issues that's a decent uh length run to enjoy i highly recommend it it's still one of my favorite books by jason aaron despite all the problems it's had getting actually made next up another marvel title but but it's a marvel title with a twist this is punisher max uh the run by jason aaron and steve dylan the series followed uh basically garth ennis garth ennis's run on punisher max with some other creators who trailed after garth ennis but jason aaron was the the the, the latest and greatest punisher max run 22 issues with a special i think as well um there used to be a great omnibus for it that i think is very difficult to get now but there should be complete collections that you can pick up um the trade paperback will have all 500 ish pages of that the entire story all collected in one trade paperback um i believe that's complete collection volume seven a really fantastic run it's very tough uh if you've read garth ennis's punisher whether it's his marvel knights punisher or his punisher max you get a real attachment to frank castle and garth ennis because he writes him so well and honestly sometimes it's tough for me to to break away from that connection but with jason aaron i was able to jason aaron does a great job of writing a frank castle that is uh is ruthless um but has principles 
um, and that still cares about the things he should have. And if he doesn't, he realizes it and he thinks about it. Um, and it really impacts him as a character. The action is insane here. You get to see a lot of characters from sort of the, the, the 616 Marvel Universe make an appearance here, whether it's Kingpin or Bullseye, um, which is good and it's also kind of you know kind of different for a punisher max story but either way it works really well the stories are incredibly compelling the kingpin stuff is uh, uh brilliant i'll say um the bullseye stuff is fantastic as well it's punisher max so it's things taken to the extreme um it's very exaggerated it's very absurd it's definitely mature uh, but a lot of fun and a really great take on frank castle that honestly is pretty high up there um with what Garth Ennis does for the character. So I highly recommend checking out uh, Punisher Max however you can, whether it's digitally or picking up that complete collection or finding the Omnibus for a good price. Uh, really, really enjoy it. Can't recommend it enough. Last up, saving maybe not the best for last, but um, arguably one of the best for me. Uh, this is the Thor run that Jason Aaron had, um, which, you know, I'm not going to say all the things i'll list out all the titles that were involved on the run um you can also google the reading order for it if you'd like it started with thor god of thunder uh moved into you know adjectiveless thor with unworthy thor running through running parallel to that and a whole bunch of things going on as uh, as the thor mythos evolved and changed under the penmanship of jason aaron but this was sort of when i was really starting to get back into comics and thor god of thunder started coming out the god butcher arc i remember the god bomb arc uh, um, really, really incredible, epic-sounding stuff. And then I would look at the covers and see that Esad Ribich artwork, and uh, I, I had to give it a shot. I had to give it a try. It looked epic, and it truly was. It was a spectacular, spectacular run. And for the most part, Jason Aaron continues that trend through the majority of his Thor run. I don't know if I'm allowed to spoil things by saying what happens, but there's a lot of turbulence with the title Thor in terms of who is the owner of the title and who wields Mjolnir. That's all I'm going to say. It's been like maybe even a decade at this point, close to it. Um, so I, I don't know. I've gotten in trouble for spoiling things before. But either way, that's all I'm going to say on the subject. You get incredible artists with the, in this run like Esad Ribic, um, Russell Dodderman, and a bunch of others I'm forgetting. I mean, Nick Klein, there's a whole slew of incredible, incredible artists that worked on this. You do also get um, a story in here with Roxon and an upcoming villain that will be showing up um, in the... Uh, upcoming Thor movie, gore, um, very, very exciting stuff happening in Jason Aaron's run. And honestly, it's a great way to get someone into Thor if they're not into Thor now. If you're looking for some, if you know someone who really likes the Thor movies and you want to get them into uh, comic books, this is a great, great, great way to do it. Um, I cannot, cannot recommend Thor, Thor by Jason Aaron. His entire run, the whole thing um, is fantastic. That's definitely the final thing I'm going to end this video off on. Let me know down in the comments below what Jason Aaron Aaron books you think are must read books I stuck to five there are a bunch of other books he's done whether it's Wolverine Wolverine and the X-Men um, his current Avengers run and I'm sure a bunch of other things that I'm just not thinking of again so please let us know down in the comment section below what your favorite Jason Aaron runs are what you recommend people check out from him as a creator and hey let me know what other creators you'd like to see must read videos for down in the comments. Check out Organic Price Books for amazing deals on hardcovers. Use the code THC2 at checkout for an extra $2 off your order. Uh, the best, the best. Um, can't recommend them enough. Thank you all very much for tuning in. This is Mike from the Hardcover Comic. Until next time, as always, you stay classy, internet.